Hey guys, I'm Hellhound, and uh, I'm here to do a movie review today. Um, one that I should have done a long time ago. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but I figured today I'll finally tackle the Amityville Horror from 1979. Uh, one of my favorite haunted house movies. Um, this movie depicts the uh, the real life uh, story uh, in which the Lutz family uh, moved into a supposedly haunted house, um, and this is kind of a recount of uh, some of the strange events that they uh, encountered, their, uh, their paranormal experiences. Uh, you know, they moved into a house in, uh, in Amityville, New York, a really big, really scary house, and uh, saw and heard some really spooky things there, and uh, so this movie is based on the true story. And, uh, you know, when they moved into the, and it was the same house um, in which a mass murder took place a few years before. Uh, so there had already been strange things that happened in this house. It already had a gruesome history um, by the time they moved in. Um, and honestly, um, as interesting as the story of the Lutz family is, I've always been kind of more interested in the story of the DeFeos, which is the family that lived there before, in which the um, the oldest son, uh, Ronald DeFeo Jr., uh, murdered his family, his parents and his siblings. Um, and you know he claimed to be possessed by demons when it happened. Um, and so this all happened before. He was already, like, in prison, I think, when the Lutz family moved into that same house and claimed to see and hear, you know, uh, ghostly things. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, voices telling them to get out and stuff. So it's based on a true story. Uh, there have been several books uh, about Amityville, several movies. Um, in this movie, the original Amityville Horror was followed by uh, a bunch of sequels. Um, they're still going on to this day. Uh, Amityville 2, The Possession, which this one's actually a prequel to the first movie. It actually accounts the story of the DeFeo family, Ronald DeFeo um, murdering his family. But here they're renamed the Montellis. They're the Montelli family, and this time uh, he, he's actually Sonny Montelli. And uh, this one's a lot more fictitious. It's not really, it doesn't really try to be realistic like the first movie. It doesn't try to um, uh, depict the actual true story that happened. It kind of goes more into like a supernatural horror movie. We actually see demons. They're, they're definitely real in this one, in the first movie. And then the actual story is kind of left to speculation, but uh, it definitely happened in this one. We There's a lot of crazy things. I've always loved this movie. It's such a nasty, cruel, little sleazy movie. It's such a mean street. I've always just ate that up. Um, there's also Amityville 3D, um, the third film, which was 3D in theaters. This one's not very good. It's kind of forgettable. Um, and Amityville 4, The Evil Escapes. And those are all the ones I have on DVD. Uh, I despise these covers. I hate these freaking covers. They are so friggin' boring and generic. No imaginations put into them. It's just a cl it's just a shot of the house. Uh, it's a little closer, and you know the lights are on. Boring. I much prefer the VHS covers. Yes, here we go. That's more like it. The original Amityville Horror from 1979. The one I'm reviewing today. Yeah, for God's sake, get out. There's George and Kathy Lutz as played by uh, James Brolin and Margot Kidder. Um, yeah, that's the movie I'm talking about today. And uh, I actually have all the uh, Amityville movies on VHS um, that came out before the 2005 remake, um, which I don't own, nor do I intend to. And there was also a bunch of movies that came out after the remake, too. Amityville, The, uh, the Awakening, Amityville Playhouse, a uh, bunch of weird stuff that I'm not even going to bother with. Uh, but yeah, then, you know, my, here's Amityville 2 Possession, much better cover than the DVD, as you can see. Um... Amityville 3D, which is a way better cover. Look at that. I remember seeing this in the video store, and it really stood out to me. That is just awesome. I freaking love that. Uh, I actually tried to draw it when I was younger, but I didn't really do so well, uh, honestly. Um, yeah, then we have Amityville 4, The Evil Escapes. I have all four of those on DVD, and that's it. Uh, Amityville, the Amityville Curse. This is the rare uh, man-hanging uh, cover, which is... Um, I think really hard to find, supposedly. This isn't even available on DVD, so don't even try to find it. Um, <laughs> then we have Amityville 1992, It's About Time, uh, Amityville New Generation, and Amityville Dollhouse. And there you have it. There's my Amityville collection on DVD and VHS and CED Video Disc, the original on CED Video Disc. If you saw my latest Loathsome and Lore video, you already seen this. Uh, look at this huge thing. Good God, it's so large and unwieldy. It's like a giant floppy disk. Uh, more info on that in my latest list and more video. Today I'm going to re review the Amityville Horror. And that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, so, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Sorry it took me... Sorry it took me so long to uh, 
get to the review. I just wanted to show you my collection real quick. Um, but really, after the first two movies, I wouldn't even bother with the rest. Uh, they range from mildly entertaining to mediocre to just plain unwatchable. Um, but anyway, we're talking about the first movie today. Yeah, so that's the basic, the basic premise. George and Kathy Lutz uh, move into the Amityville house and um, have several encounters with uh, otherworldly um, spirits and demons and whatnot. Yeah, ghosts, I guess. And the catch is that uh, George Lutz actually looks like um, Sonny Montelli, the, the kid who killed his family uh, previously, which is weird because uh, the actor who plays... Uh, that character in Amityville 2 looks nothing like James Brolin. And, you know, I don't know if they're actually called by name in this movie, but, again, in real life they were called the DeFeos, uh, you know, and um, the movie they changed to Montelli. There's actually a few discrepancies between the Amityville Horror and Amityville 2, The Possession. There's a lot of things that don't, uh, um, the continuity's a little messed up. Like, uh, like it shows um, a flashback at the beginning of the first movie, it shows him killing his family. It was actually, I think it was raining. It was nighttime. But then the actual movie, it was daytime. There's like a lot of things that don't like add up. There's a lot of continuity errors between the two movies. But really, I don't think they were really trying to relate them that much. Um, you know, then all the rest of the movies, the continuity is all over the place. I don't think they have any connections to previous films. But anyway, yeah, Amityville Two: The Possession is a favorite of mine. That's so much more entertaining than the first one, and I just love that movie. But the first one is technically the best. Um, definitely the scariest, probably. Um, and the most, uh, the closest to the actual book and the actual uh, events that actual ha actually happened. Um, you know, so it's actually, <laughs> how many times can I say actually? Um, you know, it's actually a little more grounded in reality. Um, you don't really actually see many ghosts. Um, there are a pair of eyes that you see in a window. There's things that happen, like, a, you know, one of their children get his hand smashed in the, um, in the window pane and the, the daughter befriending a invisible, an imaginary invisible boy named Jody, who's probably a ghost, um, and all kinds of crazy things. A priest comes and tries them to bless the house. Uh, they get the local, you know, Reverend um, Father Delaney. I don't forget his name. Delaney? What's his, what's his name? Father... Uh, I can't think of his name. Sorry. But anyway, a bunch of flies. Uh, come in. He gets covered in flies. Really weird scene. Uh, <laughs> yeah, flies all over the place. Uh, they really butchered that scene in the remake, by the way. It looked ridiculous. All the CGI flies swarming in. It actually looked real in the original, because it was real. There were real flies, you can tell. Um, yeah, all kinds of weird stuff's going on. And, uh, you know, James Brolin, um, George Lutz, um, gets, a, gets an axe. And it seems like if for a brief moment he's, like, thinking about killing his family, much like uh, the DeFeo kid, or Montelli here, I guess, did, um, you know, previously, before they moved in. Um doesn't really go all the way with it, though, like movies like, you know, a movie like The Shining does. So, um, you know, they, they choose to just, you know, leave. Uh, in real life, you know, the, the Lutz family just left all their belongings there. They just got in their car and left. And they never came back. And they live in another state today. Um, I can't remember if they're still alive or not. I researched the hell out of this when I was younger. I was quite obsessed with the Amityville story. Um, you know, and other people lived in the house afterwards, too, and said they saw strange things. But uh, the most notable cases, obviously, were the um, DeFeo murders and then the Lutz uh, experiences with all these crazy things that happened. Um, also, yeah, there's like ooze bubbling up from the toilet, this black substance, and there's like, I think there's like a hole in the wall, and they find like all kinds of crazy stuff. Just all, I won't spoil much of it, you know, if you hear the voices get out, the walls bleed, stuff like that. I won't spoil too much of it because I want you to see the movie and, uh, you know, experience it for yourself because, uh, you know, I'm not going to give away all the uh, otherworldly happenings, but uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah, definitely a great movie. Um, again, I despise this cover. I consider this the true uh, artwork. Um, it's more like the poster. Uh, unfortunately, this is a Good Times video, though. We know what that means. Ugh, shitty quality. Good Times and Video Treasures were just awful. I prefer Vestron Video and Wizard and New World and Canon and uh, Thorn EMI and Key Video and um, all that shit. But uh, anyway, going off another tangent. Um, yeah, The End of a Horror, great movie, uh, great haunted house story. Now, I will say, I think that movies like Poltergeist and The Shining do this premise a little better. Um, you know, they take that same concept and, and do it a little better, a little more entertaining. But this one's a little more grounded in reality, as I said. This feels like it could really happen. Um, you know, it's kind of left to interpretation, too. It's a little more psychological, you know. And The Shining and Poltergeist... Um, 
and you know that stuff's real. And, like, if somebody actually did live in a haunted house, it'd probably be a lot more like the Amityville Horror, where they would just hear strange noises and certain weird things that seem to be unexplained would happen. Uh, I don't think it would happen, like, quite like Poltergeist, where there's, like, another dimension and all of this crazy ghostly beast thing coming out and, you know, clown dolls coming alive and trees coming alive and stuff like that. Uh, see my Poltergeist review from Renfro and that, but, uh, yeah, I think Amityville Horror is a little more grounded. Uh, and it did it, you know, before those other movies, so, um, definitely great. Uh, yeah, I love Amityville Horror. I love the original movie so much. Uh, and as I said, uh, Amityville 2 to Possession also has, like, a very, like, <sighs> very strong place in my heart, because, like, I don't, I don't know, there's so, something about this movie that I just... I just love it just got such a mean edge that I don't know there's something about it just like so deliciously evil and nasty and I know what's wrong with me I should just get help uh, I should seek therapy but uh, I just love this shit I live for this stuff I eat this stuff up um, but yeah uh, for more info on the Andrewville story uh, definitely look it up online on Wikipedia has a big article about it. there's also several books as I said I think one of them was actually written by George Lutz himself or at least uh it was taken from his uh, his account of the events that transpired when they lived in that house. Uh, also, um, Ronald DeFeo Jr., the one who killed his family before the Lutzes even moved in. Uh, yeah, there's a book all about that. And, uh, he actually changed his story over the years. I think he didn't say he was possessed by demons and spirits were telling him to do it until like later on. Yeah, I think he was, he was trying to you know, <laughs> uh, say he was innocent or something. Yeah, the devil told me to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, Amityville 2, the possession, I don't think it really... Uh, tells that story as accurately as it actually happened, but the end of a horror really does. Uh, I think it's probably the closest you'll ever get to seeing what actually happened to the Lutz, the Lutzes, the good old Lutzes, George and Kathy Lutz, and their children and their priest that got covered in flies and went blind. Uh, yeah, lots of crazy stuff happened. Um, and yeah, as I said, there's not like you don't actually see actual ghosts uh, really. You see like you know, as I said, the eyes and like certain weird things like that. But um, you know. And all a bunch of skeletons popping out of the ground or anything like that. Yeah. Like a poltergeist, uh, you know. Uh, you move the graves, but you didn't move the bodies. Yeah, nothing like that happens here. Just uh, more realistic take on what would happen if you lived in a haunted house. Yeah, I love these two movies. Uh, check them out. Uh, I'd say mostly avoid the rest of the sequels. Uh, some of them have their moments. Uh, I remember the one, I remember renting the one... Uh, they had the mirror, they got a mirror from the house or something, all kinds of crazy stuff. I remember renting it out when I was young, and I was just like, what the hell is this? I don't even remember which one it is. Uh, maybe it's a new generation, or maybe it's 1992, I don't even fucking know. It shows how much I care about the rest of the series. Check out the first two, and probably avoid the rest. Unless you've got some time to kill, and you, know, you just want to have a marathon, which is always fun. But yeah, uh, as I said, I got them all on VHS, up to, you know, before the remake. And uh, the first four on DVD, and the first one on CED video disc. Don't have to watch it, but uh, now I just need to get it on Blu-ray, and uh, UMD, and HD DVD, and Beta, and Super 8, and Reel to Reel. Then I'll have the Amityville Horror in every damn format that I can think of. Alright guys, well, that was my review of the Amityville Horror. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, and stay tuned for more reviews for me. Um, as I said in my last video, uh, my Batman Returns anniversary tribute, I definitely need to review some of the superhero movies. Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, X-Men, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, DC Extended Universe. I need to get to all of those. Uh, also, I'd like to review Ghostbusters 1 and 2, and maybe all the Star Wars movies as well. Just you know, Ninja Turtles, uh, you know, all that stuff. So... Once I tackled all my favorite horror films, maybe that's the direction I'll go. And hopefully my damn The Fog laser disc gets here already. It's taken forever. It got sent to the wrong place, then delayed. I'm just tired of waiting for it. Uh, but I'll definitely show that off once I get it in my next, my next Low Some Lore video. All right, guys, I'm a Hellhound. See you later.